So, um, we've talked about uh, um, uh, a couple of scenarios before where we've talked about folks in, situ in, in particular family situations and what they can do. I'm going to start off with this example. If you're our Mary, remember we've often talked about Frank and Mary as a couple and what can they do, or if Frank dies, what about Mary? If you are Mary and you own a house that's worth about $300,000 and you have an IRA worth about one hundred and fifty, dollars you have an annuity that's worth about $100,000 and you have a bank account, that's worth seventy-five thousand. If you're married, you have, and you don't have great income. You're living on social security. You're making a thousand a month, but you've got enough in reserve, and you don't have a mortgage that you can probably do okay, as long as you're not stuck with Alzheimer's. If you're stuck with conventional medical problems that are going to get covered by Medicare, Medicare A and Medicare B, you're probably going to be okay. If you're worried about this, though, then what are you going to do? And and the reason why Mary sometimes gets worried. Next slide. Uh, is because she knows that, the, that if you're stuck with Alzheimer's and you're stuck needing nursing home care, or you want to have substantial care at home to keep you from going into the nursing home, you have to meet that criterion. You have to have less than $2,000 in countable assets. While your house will not be counted as a countable asset, once you have qualified, MassHealth, that's the Massachusetts agency that administers Medicaid, will put a lien on your house, and after you die, will get whatever it is paid on your behalf back. So if you're married and you're worried about those issues, what do you do? Now, next slide. Um, and I'm going to talk a little bit about if you're Frank and Mary, if you're a couple, what can you do? Because your options there are much broader. But if you're married, then you're worried about the fact, and this is, everybody knows this. Everybody knows about the five-year look-back period. They know that in the back of their minds, there's this issue, that if you're trying to qualify for mass health and you have to show that you have less than $2,000, you also have to document the fact and you have to give them all your financial records to show it, that over the last five years, you haven't given anything away. You haven't transferred something for less than fair market value. So when people say, oh, I'm not worried. I sold my house to my child for a dollar. Well, no, that doesn't count. You know, That's not a real sale. That was a gift of the house. Any transfer for less than fair market value. I should also mention that one of the things that is being discussed, you've probably heard about this too, there is nothing pending, there's no legislation pending right now to increase the look back period. What there is, is a piece that was sponsored by a number of congressional Republicans that is uh, looking at what the savings to the government would be if there were an extension back of the look back period to 10 years. So you just need to kind of be aware of that just because in Congress right now kind of everything is in play. So, um, one of the things that Mary can do if she's concerned about this, if she doesn't have Current, current Alzheimer's symptoms, she's not worried in the near future if she thinks she has five years, is she could just give things away. She could give things to Mary Jr., her daughter. I always call her Mary Jr., by the way, just because, I, you know, it, I think I've mentioned this before. Why is it you never have a woman who's a junior, right? It's always a man. So we always use Mary Jr. So she could just give everything away. She could give away her money. Uh, she'd need to surrender that IRA and pay the taxes on it, but she could give that away. She could give away the house. She could give away anything. Um, the only issues that she may she would may have a concern about then is, are first of all is the, is the money then safe if it is in Mary Junior's names? Does Mary Junior have a spouse that she's not especially getting along well with? Are there creditors possible? Are there any issues? Uh, and are there capital gains issues? If she just gives Mary Junior her house and Mary Junior then turns around and sells the house. Mary Jr., unless she's living in the house, is not going to be able to get the capital gains exemption for living in the house and is probably going to pay a big capital gain, which would not be the case if Mary keeps the house. And that's the reason why, next slide, that's the reason why you often hear about irrevocable trust. Oh, what you have to do, you have to transfer all your assets to an irrevocable trust uh, and then wait the five years. So I wanted to just talk about that for a few minutes. First of all, it can't just be any irrevocable trust. An irrevocable trust is, as you probably would gather, one that can't be revoked. That's why they call it an irrevocable trust. And the reason why that's important is because if you don't put any language into a trust, 
and you've created the trust and put assets into it, you always retain the power to revoke that trust and take your money back. So it has to be irrevocable, and you have to say that it's irrevocable in the document. But it also has to be more than that. It can't just be irrevocable. Uh, it, can, it can be amendable, by the way. It can be amendable in a number of ways. And, and Mary uh, or her daughter can be a beneficiary of that trust. If it's Mary, she can't be a beneficiary that can get the principal of what she gave away back. Next slide. Um, but if you're trying to figure out, and I guess the reason why I mention this is so many people already have these, and a lot of them aren't, don't, aren't valid um, because of the way the law has evolved over time, so you just may want to check it. The, the way to figure out whether all the provisions are valid is to remember this line, which comes from the federal law. If there are any circumstances under which payments from the trust could be made to or for the benefit of the individual, in this case Mary, that means everything that could, that could under any circumstances come back to Mary is countable. That's important. That's really important. And, and so let me give you some examples of that. Next slide. For example, if, the, if Mary Sr. is not a beneficiary of this trust, but the trustee has the ability to loan her money, or just has the ability to loan anybody money, and it isn't specifically said that Mary Ju that you can't make a, lo a loan to Mary Sr., right? Well then, all the money's countable because Mary can get to it all, even if it's through a loan. Um, if Mary is the trustee so that she retains control over the trust, even though in theory she's not a beneficiary, it's countable. If there is an early dissolution provision, which this, and, and by the way, the reason for this, for this list, this was a, a list I'm using because it's, these are all things that I've seen in these trusts, right? And they're typically because a lawyer has done something which the courts, when they're interpreting these, always say, this was a person that tried to have their cake and eat it too, you know? And, and you can't. You can't be in control of assets and, but not, and, but, but for one, it actually, but pretend that you're not in control of the assets. So, Early dissolution. There was a case that came down two years ago called Darty. It's a, a famous case where, where the trust, where the assets were transferred to the children as the trustees of this irrevocable trust, and the and the 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 older person couldn't receive any of the assets as long as the trust was in existence, and it was irrevocable except that it said that the trustee, who was the child, in the trustee's discretion and for any reason, could always dissolve the trust, and if the trust was dissolved. The beneficiaries in that case included Mary Sr. So there was a way for the child to simply dissolve the trust and get all the money back to Mary Sr. Well, the court said, well, no, you can't do that because the, as far as the court is concerned, if your trustee is one of your children, then anything that they can exercise discretion over in order to help you out as the senior, they have to exercise the discretion to give you back the money. That's the rule. So. Um, so if there's, if there's any control over distributions, I'll give you this as another, just a great example. There are, I've seen these, where there's a, a trust and the children are named as beneficiaries, but it is said that as, as long as the older person is alive, as long as Mary is alive, no distribution can be made without Mary's permission. <coughs> and the court said, well, no. I mean, if, 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 if you've got that much control over all of the assets, then it's easy to say that Mary can just make sure no distributions go out until she and her child have agreed that there's going to be a distribution to the child and then a check coming right back to Mary. And so that was, that was one of the reasons why the court disallowed the trust in Dorian. Finally, the house, and I'll just mention this, there is a split of opinion among lawyers about this issue. Um, uh, there are some, not me, there are some who feel that you can take the house, transfer it to the daughter, in this case, to Mary Jr. in trust, even though the mother would continue to live in the house. And that's what the trust would say, that the trustee is, that the, that the, that the, that the, that the trustee is permitted it to keep the, the, the older person in the house. Um, I think that's invalid, because what is a house it, as an asset? A house is the ability to live in it, right? And if you have the ability to live in it, even though in theory, you know, you don't have the right to any of the trust principle, you're living in the house, right? So I think those could be problematic. That's why typically the way this gets taken care of is, the, the, is that the, the house gets transferred to the child as a trustee, but the parent will keep something called a life estate in the house. I won't go through the details of that. Next slide. Can they pay rent? 
Uh, so it, 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 the question is for you, and I'm going to try to hold questions until the end. But the issue is, how are you calculating really fair market rent? Right? Can't be a pretend, can't be a dollar, right? So it's got to be like real, real rent. Two um, maybe two dollars. Um, now, the important thing to know, though, is well, I shouldn't say it's not. It's the important thing to know. If you are married and your husband is, or wife is still alive, the important thing to know is that you don't have to do any of that if if both spouses are alive. If Frank and Mary are both alive and they have those same assets, and one of them goes into the nursing home, then all the assets, if Frank went into the nursing home and they had those assets, everything could simply be shifted to Mary. Because while Frank can only have $2,000 in assets, Mary can own a house as long as the equity is less than $750,000. So she can own a big house or a good size house. Um, um, she can have, and she can have cash of up to about $116,000. But most important, she can have unlimited income. Unlimited income. So what she could do if Frank needed nursing home care, um, Frank could shift everything to Mary, uh, including the house. She could take all of the cash that she has that would put her above that $115,000 and buy an annuity. An annuity is a contract with an insurance company. You give them money. In return, they promise to give you some back every month for some period of time. As long as that annuity has a term which is shorter than Mary's life expectancy, her actuarial life expectancy, um, the purchase of the annuity is a legitimate conversion from an asset to income, which means she can be at home with the house with $115,000 or $116,000, collecting very big checks on the annuity that she bought with the rest, and Frank can qualify for the nursing home. That's the rule. Most people do not know this, right? And as a matter of fact, I just called, got a call from somebody today who was just amazed by this because he was calling about his parents. Uh, next slide. 